Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and today we actually have a uh, question to the channel from a viewer um, and pretty much the question will jump right into it. One of the questions was asking uh, social media and its effects on people in general and also how it affects the youth uh, in general or specifically applying to them and I mean, I know that this is a topic that a lot of people address about in regards to how social media seems to um, be changing the dynamic of the way people, um, you know, the way people interact with each other, definitely having a larger impact on the youth. But it is affecting uh, the general population, older population in general as well, because nowadays, you know, let's see, social media kind of really we will say hit its pinnacle, maybe about. 2010 well not as pinnacle but kind of really started getting started with the whole facebook and whatnot um so you have people who say are 30 now who's been dealing with or having social media since 20 so it actually has a pretty broad range of the people that it affects along with any other kind of people out there who i would probably say either never had either great social skills or depended a lot on attention from others whatever the case is absorbed into it even if say they are in their 40s and and you would think that they're out of a generation that it shouldn't affect as much but really diving into it when it comes to the youth i will say and i know this topic can really kind of span for for hours when it comes to kind of trying to figure out you know uh, all the aspects that social media has caused a problem with today's society and whatnot but uh one of the biggest things i would say is the weight of personal interaction um and what i mean by that is is that nowadays when everybody is communicating through um you know say some form of social media where you either don't know somebody or you kind of only know them through a tag name whether it's in the comments of like say youtube whether it's from Facebook, whether it's some kind of dating app, whether it's some kind of blog app, you know, blog or whatever the case is, the weight of personal interaction is 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 not there or at least is diminished. And what I mean by that is so normally when you're in front of somebody, and you're having a conversation with somebody and you're in person, there's a certain dynamic, a certain for lack of a better word just wait there's a certain weight that comes with the territory of if i say this to that person if i say the wrong thing if i don't um you know if i'm not kind with my words what's going to be the reper repercussion how are they going to view me how are they going to look at me maybe if i say something in a disrespectful manner i wouldn't want to be disrespectful so disrespected so i don't want to say it in that way that aspect is a big part of why you have people who, um, especially with the youth, have this sense of through social media saying whatever it is they want to say, whatever the hell they want to say. They don't care about the repercussions because you don't have that weight of personal interaction where you're in front of somebody and you actually have to worry about the things you say and it's not necessarily just a consequence like okay this person's gonna get mad at me and they're gonna you know whatever lash out attack me it's also the long-term aspect of it maybe i'm gonna know this person what if i give the wrong signals what if it's 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 something where they don't want to know me anymore what if um you know i say something that hurts their feelings well if they say something to respond hurts my feelings all those kind of things uh you know all those aspects what if they're going to view me this kind of way now they have this kind of view on me say if I, I i say something in such an outward or harsh manner or i really speak you know unfiltered about my thoughts on on certain views now they're going to view me this way and 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 now it's like okay I'm going to label him or her that kind of way. And and that sticks with you. Your reputation now could be tarnished. These are things that that kind of weight of, of how things are viewed, how they're received is not considered at all when it's through a computer screen or your phone, just throwing things out there. Now, the problem with that is that now once you have an actual in-person interaction with somebody, um, you 
no longer care about the weight of the interaction because you haven't been having that kind of interaction with people in general for a long period of time whether it's years or whatever the case is and keep in mind for the youth it's a percentage of time that you've been alive so five years to someone who's only 20 years old that's a quarter of their life and it means so much more than say uh that's like the equivalent of obviously um somebody who's 40 years old 10 years of their life so you get an idea how that kind of interaction in social media can be a big deal for someone who's young because it takes up a larger percentage of their life um also comes the aspect of the weight of no filtered thoughts online um and it being seen as real so what i mean by that too is obviously the lack of weight that i just mentioned but then also uh, as far as not having a, a personal interaction with someone but also the weight of not filtering meaning that you don't you have this sense of there's a lot of people who have this sense of protection as they always say it behind the screen so now it's like you don't filter your thoughts and the problem with that is now everything is unfiltered on social media that wouldn't be as big of an issue if people understood hey i'm receiving this through social media but a lot of people who aren't used to interacting in the regular world now especially the youth who haven't gotten out there maybe made a lot of friends or whatever the case is now view the weight of 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 those interactions as their only form of interaction so now they carry a lot more weight than what they should for such a harsh unfiltered way of of you know releasing your thoughts and your feelings so now you'll have kids or even the youth i'll just say i won't say kids but the youth who they receive that message from someone and to them it's such a big deal oh this person didn't like me that must be that everyone doesn't like me um this person said i don't look attractive this person said i'm not funny this person said x y and z so that must be the whole world and when you have a bunch of un unfiltered emotions running rampant you have a lot of people saying more negative than they're going to say positive. So then what happens is that you have a lot of people who are just kind of throwing it out there and a lot of people are receiving that negativity. For the ones who throw the positive, that can be just as bad because now you have a lot of guys or girls who are saying, but it, it's a large part with men saying to women, you're beautiful, you're this and that because they're looking to have fun. And it gives this perception to the women sometimes that, oh, you know, I must be super beautiful. So... I'm going to run around and treat people like you're less than me because I'm super beautiful. Getting validated off of, like I said, a, a, a medium that has very little weight to it. So the same way that there is very little weight in the interaction of just regular casual saying what you feel about things on online. There's very little weight to a guy saying that a woman is attractive online. It literally means nothing. And a lot of women don't understand that. Um, you know, obviously, I, I would say the same thing for men, but men don't kind of get those same compliments. It's just it's a different dynamic for the way women, men, men and women interact. But as far as women goes, especially for the young and even some of them for the older who really live on social media, the weight of someone telling you you're attractive, especially when you're seeking that, and so you post up pictures or whatever the case is of you know being halfway nude and, and you know kind of exotic pictures and you're on a boat and all this other kind of crazy stuff to get attention, it doesn't mean anything. It has zero weight to it, but yet a lot of people will try to hold on to that like it has meaning. And then once again, it dissociates them from reality when they get into the real world thinking that, okay well i'm pretty because social media someone on social media told me a lot of people on social media told me i'm pretty and it doesn't mean that and then it also makes people think they get kind of bloated in their mind similar to a, a person who has money um and thinking hey i could do what i want not relating to someone who doesn't have money it's almost like that you're getting validation or a sense of credit in the social dynamic you feel socially wealthy but you're not because it's not real and what happens is that creates this whole dynamic in the world between that between the no filtered talking the way it gives people kind of a boost of confidence to say whatever they want then carrying all that stuff i just mentioned back to the real world it distorts the way people interact with each other it also makes people very quick to dismiss each other thinking that hey with the abundance on the internet of social interaction people don't value 
the connections that they actually do make because they're so quick to just dismiss those connections that they make on the internet because it's so brief and fleeting that essentially if you get to know someone you meet someone and you get the slightest thing they say to you pisses you off you go i don't care it's almost like any interaction someone has online especially in the dating app world uh and obviously i'm I'm referring to that because that's obviously in in the places where the connection is supposed to go from being online to in the physical world so so i I refer i'm going to reference that a bit and when people say start talking to each other and trying to make a connection the conversation or if there's something you don't like it easily gets dismissed you dismiss the person just as easily as you would dismissing a comment on a blog or a comment section on say youtube or something like that where you're like i don't like you know what this person said so now i don't like anything about them the problem with that when you're doing that on meeting social apps where you're trying to meet people is you just dismissed an entire person without even a thought just because they said something to you that you didn't like that doesn't mean that you know um you may not have had a lot in common with them you just didn't like the one thing they said and the issue with that becomes the fact that when you have normal conversations in person with somebody you the like i mentioned earlier the weight of personal interaction makes you go okay you know what one they wouldn't say something that harsh to you but two you wouldn't be willing just to dismiss them as easy because having social interactions is actually a hard thing uh in i should say in the past now it it, you know it sucks to say that because this should be we should still have a lot more personal interactions in this modern day but being that that seems to be some of the past more so than it is now it was fleeting you didn't really have a lot of social interactions with people on that way unless it had so much for lack of a better word meat and potatoes like to you to get that social interaction with someone required something of you you had to go out there you had to meet the person you had to do all this kind of talk and you had to kind of get to that point where they're willing to give you their number where they're willing to spend that time with you so you didn't just dismiss it like okay i'm just gonna abandon this because there wasn't a lot of other social interactions available to you just at, at, at the whim that applied for men, but it also applied for women, too, because if they knew that they had a connection with someone that was real, they didn't want to just forego it for something that was cheap and someone just kind of screaming at them as they walked on the block. So everyone's uh, the, the, the weight of not only their interactions, but the weight of their bonds that they were creating had meaning now because of social media having no weight behind it. And that translates to the real world, even when you're trying to transition from, like, say, a digital social meeting place like a like a dating app or something like that into the real world there's no weight to even get you to that stage of even meeting because everyone wants to dismiss each other before you even get to that stage because it's almost like a hey if i meet them in person i'm gonna lose that power to just dismiss them um and and it doesn't even get to that far but even circumventing away from the whole dating aspect situation, just regular people in general, they learn how to socialize on social media. They come into the regular world. They don't know how to interact correctly. Um, they think everything is fleeting and dismissing. And that carries over to things like, OK, holding a job. I don't like my boss. I'm, I'm quitting the job. OK, doing this, um, whatever it is, joining a hobby. I don't like it's not going my way. I'm just going to quit it. And it just becomes where everything is such dis- diminished in terms of the way we um, intake everything. Um, another example of that is music. And, I, and not to kind of go on a tangent far away from things, but even the way we consume music nowadays. Back in the days, you went to a store, you bought a CD or, or a cassette tape. You listened to that album probably for like months, shared it with your friends. You guys talked about it for probably like a good three or four months, maybe five months, half of a year now it's like boom i hear a song okay in a week i need to hear a new song which is why you have artists who always have to put out a new song almost every like every month there's got to be a new song or at least feature on a new song because the way we absorb content now is so rapid so fast and so diminishing that we don't care we don't value it's just on to the next on to the next and so you know returning back to the original point of the conversation we have start we the way same way we consume information in terms of for interest and and hobbies is the same way we consume 
our social interactions from people it's just very dismissive it's like give me more get rid of it give me more get rid of it i don't like that shift to the next one like you're just going through like a a flip book of pages just choosing what you want and it's very dismissive and so that's one aspect uh that has occurred from social media um and specifically the youth but like i said there are some desperate older people who've resorted to that to fill a gap in their life or a hole in their life rather than get better at interacting with people socially um in the real world and that's just a little tidbit on the subject there i definitely think there's a problem there's definitely uh everyone could see that there's definitely like a downfall in society because of it i don't know if it'll ever turn around maybe it will hit a point where eventually people will realize um you know what i Another thing I want to touch on before I end up into the video, um, because this is probably the point where people will realize it, um, kind of connecting to one of my past videos that I mentioned before about um, emotional retirement, or if you want to call it social retirement, you can call it that too, um, because a lot of people sometimes worry about financial retirement and not this kind of emotional retirement. And this whole way of things with social media and, and the destruction of um and the destruction of personal interaction is actually going to be the downfall of emotional retirement a lot of people aren't going to have that a lot of people don't even care about what that is know what it is and just to kind of like run it real short what that pretty much breaks down to is what that pretty much breaks down to is that um, people in this day and age are going to reach a point where they have nobody. Right now, the youth and even some people in their 40s are relying on the interactions they had that they grew up with that are so personal. They don't understand that part of life, part of that emotional retirement is you need to continue creating that I'm sorry about that I had a bug crawling on me you need to create that dynamic for your future so an example of that and just to clarify it when you grow up and you're young you have your parents you have your siblings when you're like about we'll say 10 years old you have your parents you have your siblings you're coming into the social world you're, you're now kind of getting to that point from 10 years old to maybe like 15 years old you start interacting with other people in the world it's not just being home all the time coming straight home and interacting with the family you go off into the world but your support is i got mom i got dad i got my grandparents i got my siblings if i have a lot of them i got my cousins so you always have that that to fall back on and that's genuine it's pure what happens is that people who are now getting into this kind of dynamic of this kind of social media way of interacting, like I mentioned, you you throw away all types of relationships that you have because it's fine. You want to know why? You have that anchor, which is your family, your immediate family, your, your all your relatives, the grandparents, the siblings, uh, the, the cousins, all that. And that's your anchor. When you want something real, you have that. So it feels fine. The problem is this. When you're like 10 years old and you're relying on your parents who are obviously probably a good 20 years older than you, your grandparents who are probably a good 40 years older than you, um, and all your aunts and uncles who are your parents' age or whatever the case is, 20 years older and you are older, there's going to be a certain point in time where when you're 40, they're 60, you might still try to rely on them. But at the end of the day, they're about to be out of the picture. Your grandparents are probably already out of the picture when you hit 40. Your cousins are probably, um, you know, maybe some of them married if they got it. If they're not, they're single. Who knows? But the point is everyone starts spreading thin. Everyone starts going places. Who knows? You may have cousins by the time you're 40 who already passed away. That structure that you held on to to keep you grounded starts fading. And then so what happens is you don't realize that's what you've been relying on. And then if you haven't built your own emotional retirement, which is your own structure, your own family, your own empire, you're going to realize when you get 40, it's going to be lonely because now you're at the top of the kingdom, but you have no kingdom below you to actually look up to you to socialize with. And that's very important. And a lot of people don't think about that, don't realize it. The reason why you know that it's real is because when you are young, 
you have that structure above you. You know it's real because you have it. That's the only thing you know of in this world is the structure that's above you, your parents, your grandparents, all the rest of the family. What happens when you're the oldest? There's nothing above you. There's nothing above 100. So, you know, once you hit 80, there's nothing above you. It's what's below you. And if you didn't put in the work to build that, that's when it's going to hit. And for all those people, and I'm not going to go deep into the whole social, uh, uh, I'm sorry, emotional retirement. I've done that in another video. But when that point starts hitting a large amount of people, I think that's when it's going to finally hit that the younger generation. And I would probably say the ones who probably are about maybe five years old and less now. They're going to grow up and they're going to see their parents and other siblings. I mean, other sorry, not other siblings, other relatives that are older. And they're going to say, oh, shoot, look at it. They never set up emotional retirement um, or even say, you know, uh, just extended family members because they're probably not going to be the kids of them. Or even if they are the kids of those parents who maybe like just ran around having fun. They had the kids by accident or whatever the case is. And, and the kids are able to see that. And they're like, yo, my parent is miserable when they hit like 45, or whatever the case is. And they're going to say, I don't want to be that. And that's the only time it's going to happen when enough people are suffering from lack of emotional retirement that they say, this is not right. And I don't want to live this way. So I think it's going to be a long time coming. Sometimes you need a near extinction level event to cause things to have to evolve in the right direction. And I think when it comes to social media, that's just going to end up being the case when everyone realizes everything feels too fake, too fast paced, too like without substance. They're all going to know what substance is like from their core family when they were young. They're going to realize that doesn't exist anymore. They're going to seek it. They're going to want it. And that's when they're going to realize I have to make the change to create that because I need that. I don't have it anymore. It's only when you don't have that source. I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine before where it was a guy and he realized this by saying, wow, every single time I feel so comforted by my grand, my grandparents and my parents. But he's like, one of my grandparents passed away and he's like, man, you know what? Like I realized and he's not even part of the social media culture because he himself is like about 40 years old. But the thing about it is um, just not preparing for that emotional retirement, having a family that's that. He's like, I got siblings who have family already. That they started. I'm the only one out here and I didn't prepare. And the only reason why I feel comfort is because I got my mom. I got my dad. I got my grandparents. But now the grandparents are fading away. And he's like. It's just hitting me now when all that fades, it's just going to be me. And so that's to just go and say that it's real. And this is someone who's not part of that social media era or, or you know, that kind of demographic. So you could imagine for the ones who are heavily into it, what's going to happen with them. So with that being said, I'm going to end the video and I uh, hope you guys were able to digest it. Uh, shout out to the person who um, who requested this question. And, um, yeah, post up more questions for anybody who has or any kind of interest that anyone wants me to cover. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.